Good morning. Today is a very big day. We are getting ready to pull away from the dock and we're going to spend at least one night out if everything goes to plan. And the goal is to test our uh, power bank, our lithium um, iron phosphate cells and our new inverter and everything. Let's change our story. Let's change our life. We'll do it our way, our own design. take that line I'm trying to see if we're gonna walk back because this is our spring oh. I'm just trying to figure out which lines to remove this one's not doing anything but I don't want to walk back into their boat and if we don't have something up here forward we could so maybe I should strap this one around there okay we're ready to start the engines this is the port side engine and this is the one where the battery didn't want to kick it last time so uh, hopefully the battery has enough charge to do it this time we probably need to replace those all right, we got beep. During the lithium conversion, our windlass wires became disconnected and unlabeled. They were very Fine. difficult to sort out. We haven't been able to test it until now. That did not feel good. Okay, try to run it. Um, okay, I didn't expect you to do that. You're at risk of dropping the anchor there. It's, it's attached. Okay, it works. Okay, perfect. Okay. Awesome. There we go. Perfect. Okay, Carter, are you ready? Good job. Watch the back of us. I gotta turn this out a little bit. Oh my goodness, guys, we have been on the dock now at the marina for several months. And this feels good to be out on the water. I know it's gonna be short lived, but still feels good. The engines sound good. The boat feels good. There's nobody out here. And um, I already checked our Victron Orions. And of course we haven't drawn down our batteries, so it's hard to know how much they're working, but they're currently at the absorption stage. So that means that they, they detected the voltage from the alternators, they turned on, they also identified our state of charge in the batteries, and we don't need bulk charging, so we're in the absorption, and then, and then once it hits to a certain level, then it'll go to float. Um, it's probably because we were sucking off a little bit of power between turning the power off at the shore and starting the engines. So not much, but enough to, Put us into absorption anyway ella just used the microwave and worked beautifully but it was between 13.3 volts and 13.7 volts that's really not that much the next question is how much power are we going to use how much um how much power are we going to suck up over the course of 24 hours um maybe a little over 24 hours and then i'm going to extrapolate that out over the course of weeks, months, and, and see how much power we can expect to consume. Hopefully, hopefully this weekend is a reflection of what we will be using on a day-to-day -day basis. I know it's gonna be a little off, but, but this is as close as I can get. So anyway, um, once we get that, then we can size up our solar array. I had a really good question the other day about the Victron Orions and uh, they said, why are we limiting ourselves to a 30 amp um, DC to DC charger? And, and they said, because lithium are known for their, um, you know, rapid recharge. So, you know, I'm not really sure if the DC to DC chargers come in a higher amperage. I know that the Victrons do not come in a higher amperage for the 12 uh, volt to 12 volt charging system, which is what we needed. This is the highest amperage that they have. Um, however, it's 430 watts of continuous power and something like 600 for, you know, 
pulses or whatever. But 430 watts times two, because there's two engines, you know, that's 860 watts. That's pretty good considering that most of the time catamarans have a hard time getting more than about 1400 watts of solar. Um, usually they're 12 to 14, something like that. You might see someone that's got 16 watts, uh, 1600 watts, but so 860 um, just coming off the engines, that's, that's a pretty nice surplus for us. And then of course we're gonna have solar as well and we're trying to aim for somewhere around 1200 watts. Um, but I'm pretty excited about the amount of power potential to come off the engines. And then of course we can upgrade our alternators too and you know lots of things that we can do. Um, if we find that we need more power, I'm excited to be able to just start the engines and, and use those as, as generators. Now, that being said, we also have an onboard generator which is going to be used to, to charge the system in case of emergency, but mostly the onboard generator, which is a, which is a Westerbeek diesel, um, that's gonna be used for water maker. Uh, possibly we kick it on in the evening for air conditioning, things like that. We'll see how it goes. That's really cool. We We've never seen that before. It's a little little tiny houseboat and it's called Stranded Hot Dogs. <laughs> so yeah, and it looks like they give a free hot dog for a veteran. So we're heading up here to um, Sandy Island, which I believe this is Sandy Island right here. And there's supposedly an anchorage that's big enough for us. And we're gonna drop the hook for just a bit, um, check things out, hang out. Um, I think it's a good place to, to stop and, and rest for a moment and, and get an idea how our batteries and, and uh, engines and everything, how, how they're performing at this point. And then I think we're gonna pick up the hook and head a little bit further south uh, for a place to stay the night. Um, Sandy Island is a really cool uh, place. It's kind of tucked out of the way. Not a lot of people know about it and you can't really get here unless you have access to a boat. Um, wow, that fly really wants me. Do you see him? Guys, this is Sandy Island, South Carolina. And we're just gonna do a flyby basically because as soon as we slow down, um, black biting flies came around us and they are relentless. There's just no getting away from them. And usually there's an awful lot of people here, but there's probably a good reason why there isn't today. So um, we're gonna head on and see if we can find a different spot. But it's pretty cool. All right, we're here. We're going to try to anchor. We've got a lot more wind here, so that'll be good for us. Um, just hang tight a moment. 18 and a half feet of water. Um, Carter, can you open that hatch and get the remote control out for us? This one? Yep. Okay, go ahead, down button. It feels like we've hooked. Looks like we've hooked. We're getting ready to test our system. We're putting our induction cooktop outside. I'm gonna make something that we like to call turkey beans and rice. It's just ground turkey, black beans and rice mixed together. And then we eat it with chips and I'll shred some cheese and it'll be delicious. And that will be our lunch today. So this should be easy. It shouldn't take long to make. So we're gonna see what it does to our power. So let me get this going. So it turns on, that's good. So this is the app on my phone uh, for all of my different BMSs. So five battery um, groups, and then I have five BMSs, one for each. And when I click into it, it says that uh, all of my batteries are perfectly balanced that you can see right here. And over here where it's got the green arrow, we are discharging. 
and it looks like we have 270 amp hours available out of the 280 in this pack of batteries and it looks like we're drawing five we'll say 580 ish watts out of this particular battery and then when i go over here to my victron smart shunt which is Bluetooth, and I'm kind of far away from it. Let's look at status. It's telling me that I'm currently drawing 90 amps and 1190-ish watts, which makes sense because we are cooking. The nice thing is the induction cooks really super fast, so it, you don't have to use it for very long. And I put it outside because we got that idea from the winds actually, but put it outside because it's a little stuffy inside with the sun on the salon top. So um, we're out here and it's so nice and breezy and I'm not adding heat to the salon, which is fantastic. Okay, we are coming to the end of our first day. And uh, you know, the total is climbing, but we're gonna get through the night and we'll see how much we use. Sorry, no CMs are all over me out here. So far we have used 222 amp hours and we are down to about 85% of our battery capacity. And that is without feeding it at all. So of course, if we had solar um, or wind or anything else, then that would be regenerating through the day. But this is so far giving me a great example. We have not tried to conserve at all. We have been going full on with our electric appliances, um, and gaming consoles, computers, tablets, everything. So, so far I'm pretty happy with the performance of, of my equipment and um, the battery bank seems to be good. I think if we went at this moment, it looks like we could go three or four days of cloudy overcast without having much of a problem. And of course we have the generator that we can kick on or the engines to charge it back up. But we'll see how it is in the morning. Last night when I went to bed, we were at a consumption of 266 amp hours. And this morning when we woke up, we're at a consumption of 376 which is actually surprising i didn't think that we were going to consume that much through the night we are quickly approaching the end of our 24-hour um, test study here okay we're wrapping up our trip here um, we're just about to start the engines and at that time the victron orion should kick on and start recharging so uh, at this moment we have a 70 percent state of charge and we have consumed 477.2 amp hours. So um, that's actually surprising. I did not expect to consume that much. Also, uh, last night when I went to bed and checked it, it was at 266. And when I woke up this morning, we had consumed another 100 amp hours overnight. Uh, I, I'm not really sure exactly where that power is coming from. I think there's definitely some things that we could streamline to, um, to not consume. We were running a couple of fans, uh, we were running a refrigerator, we were running a freezer, uh, charging phones, tablets, things like that. There's probably some other uh, vampire, like uh, power supply things that were plugged in that we could unplug. Uh, I'm gonna have to put that under the microscope a little bit. But the gist here is we were not trying to conserve. We were going whole on, we were using all of our electronic appliances and, and using them often, which is probably gonna be a close, uh, accurate reflection of, of of how we're gonna live on this boat. Um, but we were not trying to conserve at all. We definitely could have done things a little differently. That would that would be a, a better um, consumption, a lesser consumption, but this will give us a good idea. So 500 hours and about less than, well, well, we'll round up. We'll say 500 amp hours and about 24 hours. Um, so now we need to size our solar array and I'm very excited to see how much power our Victron Orions put back in in our uh, journey back to the marina. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like and we will see you next time. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, well, I'm swinging out here because the marina people said that I couldn't use the rope anymore since they thought if I got hurt, we would sue them. So you got banned? We wouldn't, so I basically got banned for the rope from them. When we're in the marina. But now that you're out here, you can go again, huh? Yeah, and we're leaving today, so I'm just gonna spend this entire day swinging on this thing, so. Bye!